All right, welcome back to the next rhythm challenge. And today we have a few here. So we have four choices, okay? Again, we have our rhythm strips. We have lead two and V1 present coming from our standard 12 lead. All right, these are the rhythm strips. This is the enlarged version of these two leads, lead two and V1. Remember lead two is an inferior limb lead sitting at positive 60 degrees. And then we have our right precordial lead, V1, okay? So again, you're gonna look at these rhythms and choose which is the best one here. A, sinus tachycardia, B, junctional rhythm, C, accelerated junctional rhythm, or D, junctional tachycardia. All right, so take a few moments, uh, pause the video, try to figure out what it is, and then uh, restart the video and we'll go through this together. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to choose one of these four, okay? Um, so let's go through these, all right? So what you should notice is that we have one that choice that's mentioning sinus rhythm, okay, a sinus tachycardia. All the other choices are junctional rhythms in some sort, okay? So what you need to know is how do we differentiate those? Well, with sinus rhythm, you should know that we're gonna see P waves, okay? And with uh, these ones, we will not see P waves, unless they are coming at the end of the QRS complex or buried within it. So oftentimes we don't see P waves, okay, but you can sometimes see them. So that's one thing to differentiate those. And if you look down here, we do not see P waves preceding our QRS complexes, okay? So if you look here, there's no P wave coming before, and the same thing down here in these leads, okay? And if you look through, there's no P wave, so that should automatically tell you that this is not a sinus rhythm, okay? P waves should pre precede the QRS complex, okay? Um, but also, you don't always have to have that. You can still sometimes have a sinus rhythm with a block, and so they don't always come with that. But anyways, for our case here, sinus tachycardia is not the best choice, but uh, so it's gotta be one of the other choices, all right? So of these choices, how do we differentiate them, okay? So we're already saying it's a junctional rhythm, but what type? Is it just a regular junctional rhythm? Remember, that rate is between 40 and 60 beats per minute, okay? What is an accelerated junctional rhythm? Well, that has a rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute, okay? And then a junctional tachycardia, just like any other tachycardia, is going to have a rate of above 100 beats per minute, okay? So uh, those are just some concepts that you should be aware. Now, if the rate was less than 40 beats per minute and a junctional rhythm, do you know what we call that? That is a junctional bradycardia, okay? So notice it's less than 40 beats per minute, whereas sinus bradycardia is less than 60, okay? And that's really based because we're using this as our intrinsic rate for that AV junction, okay? so. That's what we have going on here. So it's one of these three, and what you're seeing is that we can differentiate these three based on the rate, okay? So remember, finding the rate here from beginning all the way to the end of our standard 12 lead ECGs, 10 seconds times six is 60 seconds, which is one minute. So if we count the complexes going across, multiply that by six, we can get an estimate of the rate in beats per minute. Hopefully this is becoming routine to you, okay? So let's attempt that, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, okay? So what you would do is 21 times six, so let's do the math here because I didn't do it beforehand, so 126. Okay, does that sound right? Hopefully. Well, so that's a rate that's over 100. Okay, so kind of putting us within this range here, over 100 beats per minute. All right, and because we said it's another three, we said B, C, and D are differentiated based on rate, we can already tell the answer is choice D. Okay, so this is actually a junctional tachycardia. Now let's just mention a few more things before we end, okay? Another thing you should know about these junctional rhythms and the sinus rhythm is that they're regular rhythms okay, meaning that the intervals between each are the same. So if you were to measure, here's one S wave and here's another S wave, okay, that's the S to S interval, 
okay? Usually we'll use the R to R interval, one here, but we've already marked this up. So just to make it easier down here, if you measure that interval and then the one between the next one, the one that follows it, and then the one that follows that, you would see that these are all the same. All of these S to S intervals are the same throughout, and that's what we mean by a regular rhythm, okay? Now we found the rate one way, but because this is a regular rhythm, we can also use another way, okay? And what you want to do, we'll look down here at lead two, okay, and here's one R wave. Notice it's almost on that thick line, so you want to find an R wave on the thick line, then find the next R wave, which is this one here, which is this one here, which is this, and you want to count the number of those big boxes between it, okay? So you find one big box, two big box, and another one and a half or two boxes after, or the small one. So what you would do is because there's two big boxes, you would do 300 divided by two, which is 150, okay? But because it's a little beyond that, it's really between two and three boxes, but not quite three. And remember 300 over three, okay, if it was three, is 100, so it's somewhere between here, okay? So as you can see, our rate is still over 100, as we saw here, okay, still still in that junctional tachycardiac range, and that's just another way you can find it, all right? With these faster rates, you can also use what you take is 1,500 divided by the number of small squares between them, okay? So if we were to take this one right here, nearly on that thick line, to this one here, Here's five small boxes, here's five and two. So you do 1,500 divided by 12, and you could do the math, but it's likely it will be over. It's gonna be over 100, so we're still in the clear there. But that's actually a more accurate way to find the rate with these faster rhythms. So just a few ways I wanted to touch on on finding the rate, because sometimes that can be a point of confusion. Now we can only use these methods that we mentioned and that one, um, so these methods with regular rhythms, okay? Whereas this method here that we talked about and multiplying by six, you can both, you can use for irregular or regular rhythms, okay? So just, just so one, choose this one because you can use it with both, all right? Okay, now a few other things I want to mention with junctional rhythms. So again, what is a junctional rhythm, right? Here's our heart, okay? Here's our right atrium. This is our left atrium. This is our right ventricle and left ventricle. Okay, our sinus node sits up here, right? Fires down through our internodal pathways to our AV node. His bundle, right bundle branch. Then we have a left bundle branch that subdivides into a left anterior and posterior fascicle. Okay, you have a Bachmann bundle coming to the left side. So that's the main conduction system. So because we see no P waves preceding the QRS complex, that means that we're not really having any atrial conduction that's getting through, okay? So remember, the P waves are pretty much up here, okay? Everything above in this area. When we talk about junctional rhythms, we're saying that it's coming from this region here, okay? Okay? Okay see these QRS complexes because you're not having P waves, which are atrial depolarization waves, kind of conducting through. So you have it coming through somewhere here and going through. And now notice that these are narrow complexes, another thing that you see with these junctional rhythms. So regular narrow complexes, okay, especially if it's higher up, a higher uh, coming from up here, okay, as it gets lower, you'll start to see wider complexes, and eventually with ventricular rhythms, you see wide QRS complexes as you have that slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So again, regular narrow QRS complexes, no P waves proceeding, and then it was, and then it was, and then it really differentiated these three here, okay? Now because you have the rhythm starting from here, so let's just draw that out again, okay? So imagine you have the rhythm starting here. It'll go down to the ventricles, okay? But it also sometimes go backwards, okay? And because of that, it's going both ways. You'll sometimes see what are called retrograde P waves, meaning they're just going backwards, okay? So you have conduction going antegrade forward to the ventricles and then backwards retrograde. And that's why sometimes you'll see inverted P waves, okay? And that may be one here. Here's lead two, remember, sitting down here. So if it's going away, you can sometimes see these P waves. These may be P waves, I'm not quite sure, but it's possible, especially this junctional rhythm, okay? And then you can have, um, because they're also going anteriorly, you may see some of these as P waves here, 
okay? Remember, whatever is going above and below, there's that temporal relationship, so this is all happening at the same time, okay? So retrograde P waves uh, can be seen, but sometimes because conduction is going down to the ventricles and backwards, it can is often buried within our QRS complex, and we may not see those P waves, all right? So I know a lot we discussed here. The main thing that you want to take away uh, here is that the junctional rhythms are differentiated be based on the rate, on the rate, on the rate. Rhythm has an intrinsic rate between 40 and 60, so less than 40 is a junctional bradycardia. If it's between 60 and 100, nor in that sinus rhythm uh, intrinsic rate, it's an accelerated junctional rhythm. And then when it gets above 100, just like any tachycardia, this is called a junctional tachycardia, which we see here. Okay, no P wave seeing unless they're buried within the QRS complex or coming after it. It's a regular rhythm, and we have narrow QRS complexes. Okay, less than the three small boxes or less than 120 milliseconds. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.